are listening to the Fuerte Network. Hey, bitches. Hey. Welcome back to our new episode of Hey, Bitch, where we talk about... Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. We wing it. Fuck it. So we are here celebrating or putting together our second episode. Second. Second episode of season two. <laughs> now well, what happened? Well, see what was... happened was we had recorded this amazing episode that I was so best proud of. Fucking our episode best that we've episode ever done. To date. <laughs> and our Mr. Producer Man mm-hmm. recorded over it. Which I don't know how that happens. It's, it's not digital. a VHS. How does that happen? It's not a VHS. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea how it happened. Like, because mm. it, it, it happened exactly like a v- VHS. Like, there was another recording, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it turned into, "Hey, bitch!" Like, what the hell? Like, it literally went over the original recording. Just a boot. I reset version, everything. Maybe. Like I always do. I've been doing this for two years now, and I have not. I don't know how it happened. Well, I, we it's lost. It's gone it's forever. Lost. It's gone forever. It well, there's a, a little bit left. There's a little bit left, and I think we're gonna release that like like it's a release. <laughs> we're gonna have a release party. A release party for it. Party uh, three. Probably four. the bonus uh, part after this episode. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna set up a Patreon account. People will start paying the show. Get on that Patreon content. Yes, we, yeah. we we like we're gonna we do like only money. fans. It's like only fans, but not <laughs> <laughs> only fans. But we don't have fans. <laughs> it's a uh, it's to fund us to get fans. <laughs> it's to fund us <laughs> to pay our fans to listen. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, so that that is why if you're following the page, we had a repeat episode of our premiere, which you know what, it got more views. So I mean, oh shit, hell yeah, we'll take there it. There we 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 that, I, I'm gonna count that as a win. So absolutely, right. we went from seven to nine. I watched this twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, like unlike follow <laughs> exactly <laughs> so in case you're wondering who the fuck this guy is in the middle here with us his name is gianni aka zara hi aka okay we won't get aka you might re- remember her from our that, live event that commercial which one preparation h yes yeah oh. The flare you were you, you were so gorgeous in it. Thank you. <clears throat> the way that you it just was bent actually over a, and took tibia that... commercial, but um... all right, you're the one running for the bathroom, right? <laughs> Typically, <laughs> she's the one that didn't make it. <laughs> Typically, no, it was me and Barbara Seville's like shitty draws that she uses, and her number just. So we're just redo. gonna go right into gonna, it, right? right into, no, <laughs> but before that, no. One of the things that I kind of like that you guys what might remember. What? Oh, you're gonna say where we we know her from? Yeah. Besides the bathroom in Charlie's. Besides the besides the wall at I don't, Charlie's. I don't go. Oh, to Charlie's. Be, besides the bathroom in the alley at Carambas. At Carambas mm-hmm. and Much cash. Better. Cash. Cash. It's cash now. It used to be Sarape before Aqua. Oh. Oh. It, it was Sarape. I, well, you gotta remember, Sarape. I'm an older <laughs> gay, so Jesus. I know when it was Sarape. She said it was Club Boom. <gasps> I, re- I you used to went go to Boom. there. I used to go to Boom, <laughs> so I I know I Sarape. So before that, it used to be Boom. Padlock. Apollo's padlock. Well, Apollo. He actually was there, and he actually cut the ribbon. Padlock. Holy shit, that's old. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that one that we always talk about? We miss. Um, the one on Central. Uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Well, that it's right there. <laughs> oh, it's right here behind us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, was... but no. Before that, before it was Club Downtown, like right, right, right well, there's Club, the, Club Downtown has always been there. It used to be the Crowbar before. Right. And so Crowbar. The Crowbar. I'm that old. How old are y'all? I'm not that old, but I did some shit I really shouldn't have been doing before. I when you were like 14. 12. <laughs> <I> was like, <laughs> well, he was in the alleys. No, but like we're we're so you, Club 702 Phoenix Downtown mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. is where Crowbar used to be. Right. And then right next door is where... Uh, did you not remember Amsterdam? No, I remember Amsterdam. Um, then we did Amsterdam. Amsterdam mm-hmm. was awesome. They had an amazing patio. They had like... I love that. So when memories. I finally turned Shablam 21... Shablam happened there? Shafal. Shafal. <laughs> I turned like 21, right? When like Amsterdam turned into Club Downtown. So like right at that transition period. Mm. I don't believe that, but let's move on. <laughs> okay. You might know this bitch from uh, our live our show. Our live event. Miss Zara Stevens. Zara Stevens. She performed live. Well, I did. And harassed the children below. Her. Oh my god. She's he you scared the crap out of my nieces. I have my nephew. I mean you scared so me. Bad. You scared me too, but I have good insurance that covers therapy. So <laughs> Ivan said hi. 
Bald oh. man <laughs> that you harassed. My bald friend. Uh, Sexual harassment is real, and it happened. Hey, he got up when he. If I asked if anybody wanted demonstrations, he stood up. Oh, that is true. He's like that. I love just it. like <laughs> the, just like the slim shady, and I was just like, mm, I'm like who? I'm tucked right now. I can't do that. Huh? What? He was tucked. Oh yeah, but what? Just like the slim shady. Just he's st- the real slim shady. Oh, thing. please stand up. Sorry. My friend is dumb. <laughs> you was kind. You was kind. You was smart. fuck y'all. Okay. <laughs> You're supposed to be you on was, my side. You was bitch. hungry. <laughs> oh, you was what? Nothing wow. Good. You was hungry. Is that what you, you said? Why you say why if uh, if you heard me? Because I'm like I wanted you to say it again so I can reach over this bitch right here. Try and it. You. Try it, bitch. If she wasn't here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying that. Um. So one of the before we get into why he's here. Mm-hmm. That we we talked about like we wanted to do like some reaction videos and this one kind of like it, it actually set me off a lot and kind of hit very close to home. It's a little it's it's hard, but I think it'd be a great opportunity to kind of talk about things and like get your input on it because you also as you know you've been around for a while like you know in the scene not like that not like that. <laughs> I was like <laughs> first of all, <laughs> well no I, what I mean by that is because of the fact that like, I, I, are you still playing rugby? Um I am not playing this season because okay. I he plays rub me. Rub me. <laughs> um, no, I uh, am really focusing my time on uh, my career efforts right now. So um, I don't really have the time to play, but I still support the team mm. in other ways. Okay. Well, because you've, uh, the, the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, some of the guys who, who could be affected by stuff like this tend to play rugby, football, stuff like that. So you still have, do you have that video? Do you have it queued, ready to go? And this has gotten all kinds of like, attention on TikTok. Like it, 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 it's actually kind of, it's, it's, it's a deep video. Like it's, I worked up the courage to go to a bar by myself for the first time. I'm very excited. People keep giving me dirty looks, but there's a cute guy I want to say hi to. I didn't even finish my drink. I just straight up left. Because I walked up to this dude that I thought was cute. And I was trying to like say hi. And he said I was too fucking fat to try to be playing with people. So I just, <laughs> I just left instead. So definitely, um, definitely not going to be doing that by myself again. So I've definitely watched this this morning and I already have two things to say. Where was he? Because Mm -hmm. there are two things that could be happening. A, he was based on his looks on two different things, his weight and what color of skin was this guy that he was hitting on Mm -hmm. because this from the sound of the music and from the sounds of the conversations that you can kind of hear in the background yeah it didn't seem like it was the most like people of color friendly place to be and those types of places also exist here in phoenix so it's like but i'm like that right there shitty Mm -hmm. absolutely shitty and 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 the crazy thing is like I experienced something very similar to that when I when I first started coming out. Like you know, I can't believe you bought this video because I was a, I was I saved it to yeah. possibly put on here. <laughs> and I, as soon as I saw this, I'm like, Danny wants to do this. Let's mm-hmm. fucking do this. And I'm like, I know we talked about possibly doing like funny videos, but like this has got to be do talked both, about. Yeah, it's got. This is got. It's my phone. Fuck it. Um, it's not like we have any plans. I know. Uh, but it, it, it's 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 something that definitely hit close to home for me, especially like I don't know, like this weekend. I when we were hanging out with Joe. Sorry. When we were hanging out with Joseph, Joseph said something to me that kind of struck a nerve, but in a good way. Hmm. Like, so like, um, I have a tendency of wearing like a, the male version of a girl, like the, the compression shirts, mm-hmm. the t-shirts. I wear one. I, it makes me feel a little bit more con- confident and comfortable. But I, when, I remember being there and, and Joseph gave me a hug. One of those moments he gave me a hug and he felt it. He's like, girl, are you wearing one? And I was like, yeah, I go, I kind of always do. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, baby. He's like, own every bit of you. Mm-hmm. Be happy with who you are, how you are, and how you look. He goes, because you are a very good looking guy. He goes, and you don't need that. Mm-hmm. And that was like, I like, I really, I fought tooth and nail of what the little bit of consciousness I had at the moment to not cry. But it really made me feel, I don't know, like, it made me feel like, bitch, own this. Like, mm-hmm. you've come a long way from where you were. Mm-hmm. You doing so much. Like, bitch, like, it's just a small part of you. So, like, I, I'm not wearing one today. I fucking actually... I, I threw it. I don't even know where it landed. But anyways, um, I, I'm not going to do it anymore unless it's a special occasion. But <laughs> <laughs> weddings, let me, let me half make a point. <laughs> no, but, but you know what I'm saying. I'm just kidding. Let me kind of be an activist. Let me, <laughs> <laughs> let me say let me I have a black friend. Toe in it. <laughs> right. No, but like, but what I'm saying is like before, like where I would have worn it, like uh, period. Like, you mm-hmm. know me, Danny. I wear it all the time. Yeah. I, I'm not going to do it anymore. This bitch like, ripped your girdle. Which one? You cut it. 
Oh, this Remember? yes. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, bitch. Remember you, you, you putting me in drag? You oh, were like, taping him. You're like, like cut, you, cut. no. He saw. He, no, this were his words exactly. How tied to you are this? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, how much do you? How tied to you are? Like, how much does it matter to you? <laughs> Not very much. Why? Okay. <laughs> this I'm like, just gonna take the fucking scissors and just snipped it. I was like, and then you were shocked. You're like, and I was like, oh, <laughs> this was expensive. Okay. And you're like, yeah. oh my god, was it? <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what? Well, I'm, he asked you. I know. I did. I asked you. I asked you twice before Pain. I went snip snip. Pain is beauty. I guess it is what it is. <laughs> there you and go. I, and I, it was hurting. Uh-huh. Um, but no, like Screaming. so. Well, anyways, with this video, to kind of go back to that. To me, it happened at Carambas. This guy came up to me, and I was there with another friend. This I'm talking like 2007-ish. Uh, I was there with another friend, and um, he started talking to me, and I was like, oh, I go, I go, I gotta go, I go, you know, I'm gonna, you know me, like, I'm not really there for to meet guys, like, more to like, hang out. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I gotta go back, and he's like, you're gonna walk away? I'm like, yeah, he's like, I'm doing you a favor. I was like, bitch, excuse me? I was just like, he goes, really? Like, I'm talking to you, like, I'm doing you a favor, if you get seen with me. <gasps> I was like, oh, bitch, uh? I don't need your favors. Excuse me, thank you, but no, I'm out. And I walked away. And so I can kind of understand what this guy was feeling. And I kind of, mm-hmm. and it makes sense what you say, because I mean, you do get a lot of that. And, and there's certain clubs and there's certain bars where that's more prominent or that's more prone to happen. Mm-hmm. I just think it's fucked up. Like that hurt, like that hurt me to my core. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it was like, he, <clears throat> he seems like an introvert because he said it in the video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, you don't, people don't understand how hard it is for them to, come out mm-hmm. uh and like meet people and like that fear of like being rejected yeah. i think anybody can relate to that Absolutely. and to be rejected in that way yeah. in that one time that you're like okay i'll give it a chance is like heartbreaking but i did go through the comments in yes. there and it was full of love and like right. who did this to you let i'm gonna hurt them like they were saying i'll go out with you so right i i understand it was hurtful but not to always see the lining, the silver lining, but the love that was was extended to him was amazing. But it shouldn't have happened in the first. What place. What I love is that the the good has definitely out, uh, outweighed outweighed the bad. Yeah. And what I love is that there's so many people that have come out and shown support of him, shown love. Mm-hmm. And I and I, for me, it's it's one of those things where, unfortunately, that's not something that you see often in regards to. It, at least I don't see it actually happening in live in any color just that one time where it happened to me mm-hmm. because yeah. bitch you, yeah. if I, I wish a bitch would come to one of my friends and say something stupid bitch like remember that one oh, time that we one were time, at Caramas yeah. so we were at Caramas <laughs> one time I happened to be a little drunk and um it's whatever. very rare though it's very rare <laughs> Um, I don't get bitch. I don't. Can we talk about those house margaritas really quick after and a little bit later from Los Sabros? But continue your story. Okay, well, oh, yeah, you got fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, so remember that night, and so I, 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 I'm walking. I was drunk as fuck because we were drinking tequila, and um, I pulled up to the table, and this guy was like, "You're a fat bitch," to Danny, yeah. mm-hmm. and I had no idea that this was actually a friend of his who was saying this to him. Yeah. Like, you know, like we kid around, like, you mm-hmm. fat bitch. Like, you know, we kid around like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And I, I called you know, a fat bitch when I saw you today. Did you not hear me? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I had Deborah Cox going on. Oh, here, so. damn it. How old are you? Um, <laughs> In gay years or normal years? <laughs> Either way, I'm older than 55. you. 55. I'm 70. Mm. Nine. Anyways, um, where the fuck was I going? You get so distracted so easily. I know. Where was I going? No, 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 don't, don't tell him. Don't tell him. I, don't tell him. Oh, so the time that, uh, that I want to see how long it would take for him to fucking realize where he was. We'd have been here till tomorrow. <laughs> we, like, I, I gotta Danny's all like, we got that kind of time. <laughs> no, so anyway, so I'm walking up and this guy calls you a fat bitch. And I was literally, that guy walked away. And I'm like, can he just call you a fat bitch? I turned right my happy ass right back around and I was getting ready to fuck. And I was chasing him. He almost snatched his wig. I, so I was literally going like this to grab his shirt to pull him back to me. When whoever was with us grabbed my hand, mm-hmm. slapped it down, and then they pulled me out. And, and I was like, no, 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 that's my friend. Relax. Like, right. Oh, I was about to cut a bitch. <laughs> Even when they were making fun of Abraham, remember? Mm-hmm. In that bar, that one dude, bitch, I was about to come. Because he started coming for me. Oh. Remember, he called me a fat bitch and shit like that. It's like, oh, hell no. See, I'm not the one. It's not. It's getting better, like, when it comes to drag queens and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, you know... In drag, everyone wants to be able to like twirl and do flips and yeah. splits and all of this stuff. And it's like, you know, the people that aren't built for that, like yeah. me, I'm not uh, at all. Like, I remember I'm not, when I asked you for the show, I was like, are you going to do death drops? Am I, if I do a death drop, I'm going <laughs> You're to like, die. I'm, I'm going like, to literally that's, die. That will be it. The greatest death drop anybody ever before. <laughs> it, will be, it will be it. So, and like now, like there's like more diversity when it comes to like shows and stuff like okay. that. So people aren't really like, oh, like 
I have to I have to work. Not with everybody's a, not every which, queen is a dancing queen and a which let me say. Queen. But there are some like you know girls that are not this thin. Yeah. That will twirl the house down. Mm-hmm. That can move a million times more than I can in drag. And I'm like, because mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. Bye. I will she stand. won't. She can't. She can't. She, I won't be bothered. <laughs> she can't. She won't because she don't want she to. Don't, oh, she don't. <laughs> she really can't. No, no, no. She's no, not capable of. And it's fine. It, like, no. I learned the day that I spent in drag in public because I know we did not We did the drag party at home and it wasn't the same. When the day that I You ended it, up the same on the floor. On the, no, I didn't. You stupid bitch. I hate you. Why are you laughing? Because bitch, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you got caught. He said. <laughs> uh-huh. Dead to me. Anyways. Um, I just like, I, I don't know. I don't understand how they would do it because like in everything, like after you, I, bitch, I was duct taped. Like, you're welcome. You were Zara. Before we you were Zara Stevened is what wait, you were. Before we move on, I do want to. Oh yeah. Talk about what you brought up the the blatant racism in our community. Absolutely. Okay. Let's Especially see. on Grinder with this preference thing that people. <laughs> oh, so it's funny you mentioned that because there was a video who said, "No, that's not a preference. You're disguising your racism." racism. As a preference, uh-huh. as you saying it's a preference, yeah, and oh, your transphobia, and the transphobia, and transphobia. like because like dude, like I, the Asians, femmes, if, if we think uh, about it, all that like, shit. Yeah. people on Grinder, like gr- like Grinders, Grinder, you know what you're there for, Absolutely. and like you know, I feel like Grinder was friends, lifelong friends. Grinder was meant for the white conversation with the gay community. It was never meant for people of color because there's no reason why you need to have a preference on there, mm-hmm. and if a preference is you're into trans if a preference is like you shouldn't be tokenizing your preferences based on somebody's identity Mm -hmm. like i like period so you know and it's just like you know i am not on the grinder because i'm good she's a Um, professional lady i'm a professional woman (laughs) um i'm a christian woman i gotta go to church (laughs) Um, (laughs) um but like you know what i mean and like part of the thing like no, me being yeah. in drag, like mm-hmm. people like to try and sexualize me because I do drag. Right. So, you know, my social media, and it's all uh, tucked deep in a Sealy Pasta Pete. Sealy Pasta Pete. That reminds me, we you need to buy some a, of those. You ripped up a Sealy bitch? No. To just look like that? Yeah. And I still look like this. Um, <laughs> so, potatoes. but like, you know, there will be men that will like, you know, sexually hit up drag queens and like, mm-hmm. hey, like, Hey mama, Take like, do you want to come fuck? And I'm like, mm-hmm. um, and I ask every time I ask, I'm like, you know, do you know what what you're Honey, trying, who you're talking to? Like, they know. Do you know? Mm-hmm. And then they're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing that because that's not what I do. Yeah. I was like, if you want to come at me normal, me, in me, and because listen, if I'm gonna be in those cheeks, a, and I'm gonna be mm-hmm. comfortable. Or- I will legit put my wig off and put it on you while I finish the job. Like, don't play me. Because if I'm sweating, it's... Oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my God. Give me something to pull on. Uh, okay. So you're a top. I can be. That's news to me. <laughs> it's news to it's many. It's news to the world, it's honey. It's news to many. But, you know, but I, there's, it's true. So, like, I've heard that a lot of the drag queens are actually... More they get a lot of people hit, hit them up, yeah. Mm-hmm. For the most part, and it's like you know, it's just that assumption because like you never know who's gonna be like. There are some trans men that identify as tops, mm-hmm. and like you know, I've been in sexual relationships with trans men who have identified as tops, and it's like okay, cool. And you know, mm-hmm. I, regardless of who you are, will always ask what your preference is because me, I'm the type of person to where if the other person is getting that pleasure, then I know I'm gonna have a good time, regardless. Mm-hmm. So, and if the vibe just isn't there, then I'm not going to waste my time, regardless of who you are. Like, yeah. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you have in your pants. Absolutely. Because I ain't got nothing to do with me. What has to do with me is, A, am I going to your house? Are you coming over? And B, are there snacks? <laughs> that's, that fair. that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's <laughs> fair. That is a smart Cause, That's a smart woman. Because from the words of Adele Gibbons, once a good dig down happens, I'll go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, my dad. Yes. Beauty shop. shop. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's a good so, one. how do we. I mean, how do we combat that? How do how does the community come together and be like, this is stupid stuff? It's Ooh. just recognizing the bullshit. Because, like, you know, for example, there's um, clubs here in Phoenix that aren't really apt to um, working really well with queens of color. 
and they've had a known past of it and you know everyone's fully aware of like you know the transphobia the racism that goes on and it's like you know well you still willingly go and perform there you're like there's still you know queens of color that will perform mm -hmm. like in these venues and it's like well you understand you're willingly being tokenized for your talent right just to say we hired a black girl i refuse to work at these places i'm good please keep your 60 dollars like I can, I'm not worried about my money. Right. What I'm more worried about is my value as what I have in an entertainer, but mm -hmm. more so like what I'm about. Cause like drag even historically has always been a movement mm -hmm. regardless. So like there are some girls that, you know, I just want to throw on a wig and be pretty. That's great. But do you understand what drag really is, mm -hmm. you know? And you know, there's all these different pageant systems and the girls that want to like get into the pageant world. But even in the pageant world, there's still a lot of, representation and community service and all this stuff that goes into it and you know there's girls that are like i'm not going to do a fundraiser show because i deserve to be paid for my talent baby do you understand the history of what you're doing mm -hmm. you know you wouldn't like, be able to be you or do this right you know not only that, but you, like, you got are. what's the word you gotta you gotta pay your dues <clears throat> you gotta pay your dues you know what i mean and, and, right and, 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 and back at i least. look at it as is is and paying your dues is being a, I mean, if you want to be a face of drag, the way I look at it, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to be a face of drag, you got to be every face of drag and show that that drag is more than just being on stage and lip singing. It's actually being a voice. It's being a presence and, mm -hmm. and being, because when you look, the way I look at it is, is drag queens, like if there's a drag queen at a club, she's commanding attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so if you're given that ability to command attention, use mm -hmm. it for the greater good of the community. Right. Like, um, Sakaria Sibyl, she's our writing Miss Gay Arizona. She does an amazing job and she yeah. chose her platform and her platform is you know getting the community and the latin x communities um registered for voting yeah you know getting them mm -hmm. aware getting them because you know like the communities of color are always targeted when it comes to voting so mm -hmm. like her platform is like get registered know what's going on Absolutely. be active in your it. community and like she's a great example of like what a true like drag queen is because she's constantly like like thinking of ways to get involved and constantly thinking of ways of being visible because in drag visibility is everything. So, yeah. but it also depends on what is your visibility and what are you going to do with that? And what are you going to do with it? You know, and like, you know, going back to paying your dues, like there's this really poor misconception of older Queens, you know, making these newer faces like crawl through shit on their hands and knees because that's what they had to do. But it's not like that anymore. Like right. we need to be setting up these newer entertainers by success. It's like, Hey, this is what mm -hmm. I did. Like, here's my advice to you, but do what you do because how you want to come up as an entertainer is your business, you know? And like, there's still like, you know, the drag politics of Arizona. Like, if you want to be in a show, introduce yourself, go like, go to the show director, be like, hi, I'm new here. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. But then also like realizing like paying your dues in the sense of what am I going to do for my community as opposed to just like, how much money do I need to make on Saturday? Right. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. That's what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. I also think we need to call each other out, too. I think that's <clears> like if somebody one. is like who's saying that or like telling you about, oh, this guy that hit me up on Grinder or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, this is what my profile look, looks like. Or, you know, that's what their profile looks like. You need to call them out. Right. Absolutely. I think accountability is a really big issue that doesn't happen yeah. because people are afraid of getting their feelings hurt. And right. it's like, you know, like feelings are there yeah but it's like if you're being a dick and you're being racist if you're being mm -hmm. transphobic if you're just you know if you're not doing stuff that encompasses you as being a good person like you need to have somebody in your circle calling you out on that yeah there's just no and excuse, then right. and then especially calling out your right. hypocrisy if you're gonna sit in and say oh no equal rights and i demand respect mm -hmm. when bitch you can't even give an ounce of it like that's right. the biggest part of me is like why you know why be that hypocrite like mm -hmm. i again no one's perfect and i get that we mm -hmm. all make mistakes we all make slip-ups i'll yeah. uh, own mine you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying right however however if you i do not I, the way I look at it is, is don't sit there and pretend that you're some big miss, you know, savior of, of the gay community or the next fucking, you know, Caitlyn Jenner egg, for, for starters. <laughs> I will say she I like, have say to give Caitlyn Jenner the respect for owning who they are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to a listen, certain point. To, well, yeah. Like, uh, I just can't. That was a whole other topic. <laughs> I'm tired. That's a tangent we do I'm not want to go on. Yeah. So with that, like, I mean, so kind of, I, I, I wonder, I'm, how do, how do I go, how do I go about this? So like, I remember when me and you first started talking, mm -hmm. and you said that what? exclusive. No, not like that. Shut up, fuck up. But I remember when we were talking, like, when we were just talking about dating in general, mm -hmm. you had told me that it, it was different for drag queens to date. 
Yes. Why? So, I mean, if you're okay with talking about no, it. No, no, for sure. Like, you know, people have this misconception that, like, you know, like, if I'm doing drag, mm -hmm. I'm dressing up in drag you in my nine to five. Like, when wow. I'm in drag, I'm at an event, I'm in a show, yeah. I'm, you know, in the AIDS walk, I'm yeah. going to a pageant, I'm, you know, I'm actively doing something. Right. I'm not just like, I'm going to go to brunch today on a Tuesday dressed up like Zara. No. A, that takes too much time. B, that's a waste of my money because I'm not. It's makeup. I'm not. It's makeup. It's jewelry. It's glue. It's duct tape. It's time. It's time. You know, and it's like, no. So people assume like, oh, you, you do this every day. No, I don't. And then, you know, people assume that you're like super feminine all the time. I'm not the most masculine, but I'm also like not hyper feminine. Do I have right. a full set of nails sometimes? Absolutely. Because A, I like them, but B, it's convenient. So I don't have to wear press ons and I'm not constantly, you know, flicking them, flicking off. them off every chance I breathe. Like I'll right. like put my hand down, take a breath and like my thumb will like fly across <laughs> the room like it's curtains. But like, um, and then people assume that like, you know, being because you work in the bar that you're going to be promiscuous mm -hmm. and it's like if i for me personally i don't other entertainers whatever their mo is that's their business but for me it's like you know if i'm in drag i'm uncomfortable i am mm. duct taped oh, we know about i am real. tucked i have five layers of tights on i have it's pads hot. on i have a bra on i have foam in my chest i have a wig cap on i have a wig on i have 19 pairs of hair on my face at one time for the lashes like i'm good like i'm not trying to get railed in the back of the bar like i'm trying to go home and shower so i can uber eats 32 dollars worth of taco bell <laughs> <laughs> like i'm good been there before <laughs> I, seriously. like i'm good you know and it's like you know and people are like oh well it's too much it's too much work because you know too many people know you it's like well even like when i'm not in drag i don't willingly just like go out just to go out yeah. like if i'm and for my job like i work for the southwest center so i am constantly out in the community out in the bars like you know yeah. getting people tested getting people prepped like doing all this work so it's like i don't want to just you know go out and get trash on a tuesday yeah why because i'm tired like i i do i do my work i go to my shows but then i go home because mm -hmm. that's like my safe haven and that's like my break so it's like when I date somebody, that's also the same thing. It's mm -hmm. always like, a, you know, if I go and I invite somebody to my show, they're like, oh, well, what's next? I was like, home. So I can take the shit off. Because my drag mom, Savannah Stevens, has been a very good role model for me when it's come to drag. So, you know, on how I look, how I present myself, how to talk to people when I'm in drag, how to um, act when I'm in drag. Because if you, if you act like an asshat when you're in drag, then that just shows what you are as an entertainer. No. In general, if you act like an asshole outside of drag, that shows what you're like as an entertainer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like how you are as a person really encompasses what I'm going to get when you're an entertainer. So if you're like shady, if you, you know, like to look down on younger queens, if you, you know, have this God complex, I already know what you're about and I am OK not working with you and I am OK with you being terrible over there. So... I am gonna break this. Oh take don't it out. do drugs. You kid. can take don't it out. Do drugs. Don't do drugs. I don't do drugs. <laughs> He's not drugs. Do me. <laughs> drugs do. And we gotta remember, like, it's not just like a little hobby. Like, it's a perf. Like, you are a professional. You are. Mm -hmm. This is art. Like, it's Absolutely. not like you, you yeah. just slap something on and go to work. Well, there's some entertainers that still do, but um. What are their names? <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. Um, you brought it up, honey. <laughs> I did, but you know, their names are. Sealed I don't away. care. Um, I don't know her. You know, and there's queens that come up, like you know, and ask me, like, "Do you like my makeup? Do you like this? Do you like this, baby? It doesn't matter what I. Do you like it? Because in the back of my head, I'm like, baby, I don't care. I'm like, I'm not wearing it. Like, do you feel confident what you're wearing? Well, yeah. Then you look good. Like, then go look good. Go. Cool. Is that what you told my mom? <laughs> I was waiting for it, you stupid bitch. <laughs> no, you know what though? Like, like, so you put me in drag. So everybody, I should, I should have sent you that picture. I sure did put you in drag, and I was really mm -hmm. hung over that day. So I know you were, but it was three first hours and foremost, later. <laughs> was it three or four hours? It was about three or four. Bitch, three or four hours. I know. Well, no, partially because you kept moving. 
You Dude, kept, I said the same yes. thing. Moving. Like, every time you wanted to, like, look at it, and I was like... He doesn't have uh, any sort of, like, restraint. I was just, <laughs> like, you know, doing this, and, like, you would move, and I'm like... And I Start looked at over. you, and I was like... Move again, move and I'll kill you. Move one more time. <laughs> Please move one more time. <laughs> like, I was gonna look like the guy from Mulan when he was, like, doing this. Or, no, Hercules when he's, like, drawing oh, him yeah. on the pot. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, that would have been amazing. <laughs> just goes on stage he's fucked up <laughs> right i've been like look there you go but yeah i did put you in drag it you took did. a minute but it you... did take a minute and I, let me tell you so like i did this was my second time in drag right so like i did drag for my was it my 31st birthday mm -hmm. we did a drag party mm -hmm. and we literally danny jovan and i literally sat in, in a mirror with, oh, see now it's oh me my sorry god. what is oh. wrong with you two <laughs> um it's the sexual tension i know it's gross <laughs> Perhaps. Um, Could y'all cooter bump and get this over with so we can get on with the show? Yes. Go to the bathroom right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it was for oh, shit. It, we, 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 oh my god, you're making me blush. <laughs> I mean, this is so cute. Shut the fuck up. Uh, I, I thought the laugh was coming. The trumpet? No. Oh, yeah, the trumpet laugh. Oh my god. Oh that? no, yeah, yeah, I did. That's how he sex dick I have her. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Real interested over here. Um, okay. What was so the anyway? <laughs> so Danny Joven and I were literally in the oh, mirror yeah. with the tutorial, going step by step. So I said, "Do this, pause, and we do we it. did it." Um, we did not look the prettiest. We did not. We, we did you order it on Amazon versus what you order on a wish. Is that what <laughs> Girl, yeah, which very versus wish. what you found in the alley. <laughs> like, <it was> very <laughs> bad. like Joe has some. Well, Jeanette fucked your, him up. Your cousin fucked Jeanette him up. Jeanette fucked him Sabotage up. Sabotage if I ever he saw has one. Some old, serious oatmeal, oatmeal eyebrows. I can't lie. <laughs> Listen, there's I I hate doing drag in the summertime. Like I hate it because it, it's hot as fuck. But like when I your tell face you, melts. your face melts. Yeah. Like and you know, Krylon is like one step away from asking Sharon Williams for your foundation. <laughs> <laughs> like there's which like, remind you, do you still have the colors? I do. Kind of borrow them. Yes. Do, uh, okay. But like your eyebrows will start to come undone yeah. because you use Elmer's glue. Mm -hmm. Like there's some girls that will use like, you know, spirit gum on their eyebrows. Some girls will shave their eyebrows all together. Some girls will put, um, it's called prosade. So it's like a, like a liquid adhesive or a cream adhesive on it. And it's a lot stronger, but you know. So when I did the chola look for Halloween, huh. I know yeah. it wasn't cute. I saw. Do you have some opinions about that? Huh? It seems like you have an opinion about it. And I, I don't have opinions on things I don't know anyways. Oh, okay. So Dulce used, um, well, we did the Elmer's glue at first. We did the glue stick and it uh -huh. wasn't working. And the next thing you know, like, because it, I was already coming off because I was sweating like crazy. Mm. She ended up using eyelash glue. And it actually worked. It that actually work. held. But actually, I've seen shit like that. And it held pretty well. I also saw another hack where, like, this guy put, like, Elmer's glue on his, like, Hand, I saw that and then and like glued that on oh, over that. and I was like interesting I saw that I literally saw that this week I'm like all right how does that work so I'm gonna need to do it yeah. in drag there's some show. girls that shave their eyebrows off oh, and I would that. love to do that if I knew how to draw them on if I knew how to draw eyebrows on in drag I would definitely be able to draw eyebrows on as a boy but I can barely draw my eyebrows on in drag like there's times where I have to redo like a whole quarter of my face because it's just like they say you're supposed to make him look like sisters. Your sisters, not cousins. Not but cousins. listen, I had Alabama cousins. They was fucking each other. Okay? Ooh, they're all like... <laughs> <laughs> they was kinfolk. She was confused. They, <laughs> they, they were confused. Mm -hmm. They confused. was confused. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, it was... it. So, being... Learning, doing drag publicly, I have a whole new respect for drag queens. Like, it's just... It's, it's a lot. It's mm -hmm. a lot that goes into that. Like, I remember, like, I, I said this on, on our first episode when we talked about me doing it. When I went back, I was saying, well, you know where I was saying at my friend Joseph's house. Mm -hmm. I, when they were cutting me out of that fucking duct tape, bitch, every cut was like, ah, ah. like every, every, every fucking <laughs> yeah. snip was literally like, I it was relief. Yeah. Like, and you had something over your skin. Me, when I duct tape my body, I don't use anything under it. I just go straight to your skin to, from tape to skin Ugh. is what I do. But like for me, so like my goal is to eventually compete for Miss Gay Arizona. So, so that's, like, okay. Huh? So 
when I'm learning all these old school tricks, like the old school tricks work. Yeah. They're not necessarily the most comfortable, but they'll make you look mm-hmm. good. Like everyone's like, oh, your shape looks really good. What corset do you use? Duct tape? Mm-hmm. Ace hardware? It fixes everything. 369 <laughs> plus tape? Wait, wait, first, wait, let's start in the beginning. Mm-hmm. What made, you, what made you do it? And how'd you choose Zara as your name? <laughs> So, um, so I first got interested in drag in like 2015. Okay. Um, so at the time I was actually dating some, I, I was dating somebody that wasn't the biggest fan of drag or anything feminine. Oh, um, right. but I was really good friends with Ophelia Buns and they were doing a one in 10 benefit show, which is, you know, a fundraiser for one in 10. But I was like, Hey, this is my opportunity to see if I'll even like it. Yeah. Okay, so before I even brought it up to this dude as to like, hey, I want to be a drag queen, I was like, hey, I'm doing a fundraiser. I'm going to check it out. So, but what he didn't know was weeks leading up to that fundraiser, I had um, Karime Lizaldi yeah. um, painting me and like, you know, giving me a face. I did it for Halloween and then I did it for um, a pageant that my friend Aaron was competing. He mm-hmm. was um, for Entertainer of the Year. Okay. So I went down and dragged for that and people were like, oh, you look really good. But like, I didn't really have pads on. I didn't really have boobs on. I had like, you know. The full on. I didn't have the full effect, but I had a very good face. You were serving face. That, but that's what I, for me, that's what caught my attention in drag was always the makeup. Because always the makeup, well, if you do it right, bomb. Um, so then I met Savannah Stevens when okay. she was the reigning Miss Gay Arizona America okay. at the time. It was 2016. Okay. Um, and I met her and she had a crown and I was like, this That's changes a pretty crown. everything. <laughs> and you know, I'm not going to lie. Like my first instinct, because I was young, I was yeah. like 22, 23 at the time. Yeah. I was like, I want, I just want the crown. That's really all I want. But then, you know, mm-hmm. learning about it, learning what the Miss Gay America system is and like learning that there's other pageant systems. Like I was like, oh, maybe this isn't what I want to do. So I kind of backed out. I was like, I'm good. Like, I'll go watch shows and I'll dress and drag whenever. Still continue to be with people that really despised drag queens. They loved to watch them and tip them, but dating them was off limits or they just hated anything like feminine. They were like, no, I'm good. Right. So then last year, like mid pandemic, I had a friend that reached out to me um, because she worked for Fear Farm. Okay. And they wanted um, like a drag queen to do like to play a gypsy fortune teller. So then I sat there and I was like, OK, how do I do this? Because she assumed because she saw the old pictures of me in drag that I did drag. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> so um, Elijah McKenzie actually helped me and did my face. Uh-huh. And, and then that's when I was like, you know what? This is my moment. This is when I do it because I was fresh. At Fear Farm. I was at Fear Farm. Far. Far. <laughs> this is my stage, this everybody. This is my stage because if it's scary, I'm in the right place. So like, but it was like, you know, I'm I'm single. I'm not seeing anybody. Like I, this is my time to figure out what I want to do. Yeah. Um, And I did it. And, you know, when I was the gypsy fortune teller reader, I was more so reading people for filth. It wasn't like, you know. They came in, I talked shit about them, and then they left. And they loved it. You know what I mean? They they had a blast. I don't know what it is about people love to get read by drag by queens. gay people or drag queens. Like they or even, it, even gay people. Even like, just, they they love like, and people I'll call a girl me. bitch, and she's like, oh my god, I love it. And people tits <laughs> me, and it was funny. I would like had, I had a little skeleton bowl thing, whatever, and I put like five ones in it at the beginning of the night, so people saw the money. By the end of both, actually all... I was there like seven nights and throughout all of October. And then I went and um, did other shows. I think I came home almost every night with about $400, $500. So like with those seven nights, I made about $3,500. Girl. Holy shit. Tips. Girl, and, it was, and, it was, and it was my <laughs> first like night, like just my first time ever being in drag in the public eye. Right. Like, and then I got my first show booked at um, Caramba with Hoochie Boo. She actually did her first show, asked me to be a part of it. I was like, yes, absolutely, whatever. And it was my first show. And from then on, I just continued booking. And then a couple of months later, I got booked in Columbus. Then I got booked in San Francisco. And what about the name Zara? That. Zara. So I have an obsession with old Hollywood, like gross obsession with old Hollywood. So, um, Zsa Zsa Gabor is actually mm. one of my favorite 
actresses of all time. Um, I didn't want to take Jaja because it mm -hmm. seemed too like powder puffy for mm -hmm. me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it just because there's like a persona that comes with that name, right? So yeah. I was like, so then I kind of was just like, you know. I might have been a little stoned, uh, <laughs> like on my couch, just really? kind of like doing this. All of a sudden, he's drugs. Drugs. And <laughs> God made that. Okay, um, oh, it's natural. Um, Spoken like a true pothead. <laughs> uh, me. Um, so I was laying on my couch and I was like literally going through every like syllable. I was like zar 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 zara zara zara. Okay, like, and then like it didn't really click until like I said it, and Savannah told me like the rule is in drag, once your name's published on a flyer, that's curtains. That's what your name is. So I'm fucking stuck with Pandulce. You're Pandulce, bitch. <laughs> it's better than Quesa Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> or Gordita Supreme. <laughs> Uh, Com was... Combo number four. Um, <laughs> number four. Can I get a T3? <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> uh, no, but um, so then, you know, all that time, I was also being mentored by Savannah. Um, and I, after my, before my first show, I was like, can I tack on Stevens as my last name? And that's when I became a Stevens. Oh, sure. So um, we have like a little family. So there's Savannah Stevens. Olivia Gardens is an official is a Stevens. Um, she just doesn't use the name. Trey DeGroote is a Stevens. Um, Whitney Stevens, Doja Stevens. Like we're oh, we're a little crew. So, um, but yeah. So that's where Zara came from. It wasn't anything like, oh, this was your grant. No, it was me on the couch thinking about it <laughs> because I didn't. You ground. hear that? If you want a uh, drag name, just get high. Get high and lay on the couch. And get high to make shit up. Groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have a question for you. Uh -oh. No. Who are you again? <laughs> you didn't read the show sheet? <laughs> I've been listening to What's a show years. sheet? <laughs> um, RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. I know that oh, we okay. have our own opinions about Drag Race. I know okay. that drag queens have a different opinion about dra uh, Drag Race. Okay. Um, I know in the beginning you mentioned, you know, these kids are expecting a lot from drag queens that, like you mm -hmm. said, are not the ones that are flipping and tossing and mm -hmm. death dropping and dipping. Mm -hmm. So what is, do you think drag race has benefited drag queens or maybe deterred or created, or like, created a false like a expectation. false expectation? Yeah. I feel like RuPaul's drag race is another roadway for drag queens to take. Um, not everybody wants to be on television. I, I I have told myself if I were ever to audition for that show, I will do it one time, and that is it. Mm -hmm. If my if I don't get submitted, I'm cool. Like I'm good yeah. because people don't really know what all goes into creating that show. And you know, like when you're there, you you're isolated. You are kept in a hotel room. You're not allowed your phone. You're not allowed any social media. You're, you're not even allowed to like, so just to socialize with, the with other each players. other. You're yeah. not. So anything that is on camera is actually genuine because they mm -hmm. cannot talk unless the cameras are on. Right. So there's, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, an, ordeal. it's an, yeah. <laughs> and you know, there's a lot of Queens that are, you know, iconic that have been on RuPaul's Drag Race that these people don't really, the younger generation doesn't really know. Like Tamisha mm -hmm. Iman. Mm -hmm. Is legendary, yeah. and you know she was on RuPaul's Drag not. Race with a uh, colostomy bag. Like she had mm -hmm. a whole story yeah. behind her, and nobody really cared because, she like, he, she doing... was outshined by these younger girls. Yeah. Right. And you know, like, the thing about RuPaul's Drag Race is that when they produce these shows, they write your story for you, mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of people don't realize. And that's why, you know, a lot of times when people are eliminated from these shows, it's just because they aren't able to write a story that's good enough for the television. Mm, they're to entertaining enough. So, and you know, like, for yes. example, Joey J is a wonderful person, an amazing entertainer, like, and yet was Chicken gone. But like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, and to me, shame on, like, people didn't really give her the notoriety, notoriety mm -hmm. that she deserved on the show because it's like, oh, to me, shame on. Like the Iman last name, unless you're Coco Iman, um, is like if you see that name on a lineup in a pageant, mm -hmm. pack your bags. Yeah, it's you're done. 
you're you're good. Don't even try. You're good. <laughs> like you're gonna make a lovely first alternate. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I asked that because, for, I asked because I, I read a, a paper or an article about the what the costumes cost now. Yeah. The show has evolved so much. It I, depends. It depends. So um, there's a lot of local people that will make these costumes for mm-hmm. entertainers. And, you know, Wes Eichstead, who is, um, owns his own business that's called The Sewing Bear, he makes all of my costumes. Mm-hmm. So... Um, you know, and some of them are costly, but some of them are not, you know, it just really depends on what you're having done. Because um, one thing I've learned from the Miss Gay America system is that you need to look expensive. But in order to look expensive, it doesn't necessarily need to be mm-hmm. because drag is an illusion. Absolutely. So like, you know, what's her face when she went on Drag Race and she had a dress made of sponges? Quit it. Oh, that was uh, oh. Monet exchange. Like Monet, Monet did that like. That wasn't expensive. Yeah. But it was fucking iconic. It like, was. And people lived for it. Like, yeah. that's the thing is that, you know, I think people really hold RuPaul's Drag Race to a little too high of a pedestal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, once you meet these girls, they're they're normal. Mm-hmm. They're not any... I'm not trying to say that they're not anything right home about because mm-hmm. a lot of them are very sweet. Candy Muse is a sweetheart, you know, oh, contrary to what TV made her look out to be. Mm-hmm. Like, Utica is really sweet. Joey's really sweet. Like, they're all genuinely really sweet. Yeah, there's a few that are like, you know, assholes. Like, Bianca Del Rio is a sweetheart. She's hilarious. Like, yeah. but, you know. But then you got like, like, Fifi O'Hara, who you can tell is just like, iconic oh. in public. That's your sister. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> um, like, you know, and people, um, what's her face? Like, they're, and one's in Vegas, like, Kamora, she's really sweet. She's been here in Phoenix a few times in the past couple of weeks. And, like, every time she's, like, we've seen each other, hey, how are you? You know? Mm-hmm. So, like, a lot of them are really sweet. But, like, you know, people really put RuPaul's Drag Race to be their end-all, be-all. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the focus needs, that just needs to be an option. You know, because there's drag queens that are doing things all over the country, getting, paying their bills with mm-hmm. it. Like, you know, Sabrina in White. In Miami. Yeah, in Miami. Those girls in Miami the palace? at the palace? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Dude, Flipping off buses, bitch? Let me tell oh. you something. That, that, like, what you see on on TikTok doesn't do it justice. No. I'm actually seeing it live. It's fucking insane. Like, so, like, for example, Sabrina White. She's the reigning Miss Gay United States. Like, she's all over the place. Pattaya Hart. She's here in Phoenix. She was here in Phoenix for Pride. She's the reigning Miss Gay America. Like, you know, there's all these different options. You can go into pageantry. You can go into, like, live entertainment. You can, you know, do the stand-up comedy thing, like Bianca. Like, it doesn't need to be... And now in Vegas, like those shows. And now in Vegas, you can go into Dragula. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and I think people need to really kind of take a look at Dragula a little bit more because those entertainers, listen, What's that's that? drag. You've never, like, you never seen Dragula? Dragula is... Have you ever been to the Queer Agenda? On SAC. So it's, it, I don't like to say alternative drag, but that's what they it's call different. it. It's not, you know, it's, it's not, not the glam, pageant, glam, glam it's not the, the pageantry. It's the really raw, like, this is my art and like, this is what I am. Very like, um, um, what was her name on, on, like, do you know Dali? No. <sighs> Astrid Aurelia? He doesn't know any of these. Oh my Lord. <laughs> no, what was that queen? She was on the, the, the season with Bianca uh-huh. with, um, she, Party City? No, that was gross. Season, that was though. season five. No, she was the the one from New York who had like the spikes, and she had that. She's the one that had the the the, the styrofoam head. Um, <laughs> I don't know her name, uh, well, but I know her. what you're talking about. But she's she's old so school. That's this not, is Dragula. So that, that's Club Kid. She's Club Kid. Yeah. She's not so, so this much is Dragula. This. Oh. Okay. So it's not. They're not. Not beautiful, but it's just you know not something that not traditional. It's, just a different it's, glamour. Not, it's, it's a different side of drag that wouldn't get the same time of day they would on RuPaul's Drag Race, which is unfortunate, hmm. you know. And like RuPaul's but Drag Race has uh, come. Dragula's in Hulu or something like that. Uh, it's, it's streaming somewhere. Streaming somewhere. Yeah, it's Hulu. Um, but like, you know, people really just assume like if you're not on RuPaul's Drag Race or you're not in these pageants, like. Then you're not worthy. Then you're not even where you at, like, yeah. kind of thing. Okay. Like that's it doesn't matter. Like you know what I mean. Like your your bookings have nothing to do with anybody else. So when these girls are like, "I'm booked, blessed, and busy," good for you. No one cares. Like you know, humble yourself a little bit. Absolutely. Like, there's a lot of entertainers that are like, "I'm booked, I'm blessed, I'm worried about this, this, and that." Neat. But what are you doing for your community, baby? Like 
Like I'm, that. I'm so glad that, that you are booked and blessed. But what are you doing with those blessings? Because if it wasn't for that community that, had, that was giving you the support that you're receiving, you wouldn't be anywhere. That part. And you know, there's a lot of out, uh, queens that will come from out of town and think that they're gonna like run the show. But like, you know, people that are here doing drag have been doing drag here for eons. Like Davina Ross, Pussy La Hoot, Barbara Seville. Like those queens are literally, like Savannah Stevens, like they almost have literally built like the drag community I feel like from the ground people up. People sleep on the drag community of Phoenix. They do. And people don't want to support the local queens. And that's that's the issue. Is like, you know, you know, we have like Desiree De Mornay, who's an eight time national title holder here in Phoenix, and people will not even give her the time of day. I, when I came to your show at Caramba's that one time? Uh yes. Sicaria performed. Yeah. I loved her. Like she is just fierce, a different level. Oh, she the... won for a reason. Yeah. She, she's, she won dude, for a reason. She's 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 badass. There was also another. She's the one from Yuma. No, there was one there from Yuma. Um, what's her name? Ooh, I don't it's like remember. a one that that show was so long ago. I don't. Remember. I know it was in February. It's like almost a year ago. Yeah. But anyways, there's another drag queen that came up from Yuma just to do the show, and she was fierce. Like that whole night was nothing but fierce queens. Yeah, and you know, and people, you know, and people will be there and they'll throw it on, but then they. Turn out, but like part of the thing is like if you're not gonna tip your queen, tip her with your time. Absolutely. So you know it's like you know. So like you know if you're in the front row of a show and you're actively on your phone, best believe Mm -hmm. I'm gonna lift your chin up and command your attention, or I'm gonna look and see what you're doing because it's like what are you doing that's a little bit more important to me at that time. I understand you have obligations or whatever, but like you know, step back, step, don't take a space, step away from the show. If it's something that's urgent, you obviously oh. should be stepped, you know, step away from your space. What other etiquette when you come and see a dress? Yes, great one. <laughs> release, girl, release. Uh, release, girl, release. <laughs> well, like, you know, tip the girls. Like, tip the girls. Yeah. Tip always, this is like. Free show. <laughs> uh, well, that, and, you know, like, if you're not, if you don't have money to give us, because we understand, you know, money's hard for people mm-hmm. and they don't have the money to be tipping people, tip us with your time. Mm-hmm. record us take pictures ask us to take pictures like mm-hmm. if you want to like have give us a shot we don't care like yeah. you know we just want to know that you're appreciating, appreciating. us and appreciating our time. I just feel appreciated. don't <laughs> hand me a tip and like try and like pull it away and like try to tease me with it because that's demeaning then you can just keep mm-hmm. your dollar yeah and then i'm not going to come back yeah because then i'm not going to see you because i'm not going to pay attention to you it- that's true. That, I'm good. That's true. Because I've done, I've, I've had it done to me and I'll either do this and like pull it and just like try to play it off. Uh-huh. And then I will not acknowledge cool. you for the rest yeah. of the night. Even in one night, you know that there's bitches like that. There's mm-hmm. people who do that. And I'm like, okay, I'm not playing this games. So I ain't got time. These heels hurt. I can barely mm-hmm. breathe. I don't got time for putting up with your bullshit. So I get that. Yeah. So- if, if a queen like lays her jewelry on your table, don't take it. That just means hold it. Oh, there have been girls that have had their jewelry jacked. Like, are you serious? Because they'll set it down like right there. Because mm-hmm. you know, so our earrings fall off sometimes. Yeah, we'll lose a stone. You don't have time to be like, well, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, leave it and just let it. Or if like you throw money at us, so like, say you throw a band of ones and just on us. Please know that you're gonna have to come pick that up and hand it to me because I'm not bending over in these heels because I just twirled it for three and a half minutes and mashed my mouth to some lyrics I don't even know. <laughs> okay. And I want the taco in the back that mm-hmm. I want. So please, it, you know, if you see hand a queen, you, drop a dollar, go ahead and pick it up, but give it back to them yeah. or hand it to security or something, you know, like don't just, mm. and don't try to like read a girl for her outfit. At all, like especially yeah, Danny. If, especially if you You're don't not a real drag queen. Well, <laughs> especially if you don't do drag professionally, if you don't do yeah. drag at all, if you don't do. That's why I was like, you know, there's a lot of people that have all these opinions of drag queens, but will never put a heel on in their life. Mm-hmm. Have never taken foundation to their face in their lifetime. I have more makeup on in any given moment in drag than a normal 32 year old woman would have had on in her lifetime. You know, <laughs> so it's like, you know, don't don't come for me when I didn't ask for you. Yep. Stay in your lane. What about drunk people that try to join the show? Oh, we kindly escort them off of the stage, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, if people are there to have a good time, like, and I'm the kind of people, the kind of people, the kind of person, that, <laughs> we have multiple personalities. Um, 
So no, we just we're just insane. Um, like if people are drunk and like want to enjoy the show, don't try it. Um, and like you know, come on stage with me and try to dance. Like I'll work them into my number. Mm -hmm. Don't think I won't because I like to have fun with my audience and I love to engage with my audience. That's what makes drag fun for me. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But like if I'm on stage in the middle of like a Tony Braxton power ballad and I'm mm -hmm. like in it. Yeah. If you step in my spotlight, <laughs> you will know. Assault charges, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. But you it was disagree assumed. with it. But you didn't I say didn't, no. I also didn't do that. No, I didn't. Mm -mm. All right. There's so much to learn. Like, there is. There so is. And you know, to... there's a lot of like, you know, because I am a queen of color. My dad is black. Mom's white. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of people that like, if you don't look black enough, you shouldn't be doing numbers that are seem too black and you know there's some entertainers that are like well no you can't do this song from the color purple because it wasn't meant for you because it was meant for you know darker skinned black people baby black is black okay like stop it like you know and it's like especially if you're white and you have an opinion about a, a, what a black entertainer should be doing have many seats Pay me mm -hmm. your reparations and dollar bills and a tip, uh -huh. not your opinions. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> like, thank you. I am good. So, what do you think about Raven and the whole thing with Raven? Well, I don't know. So, people are saying that she is doing blackface. She's not, but she's always painted like that. Right. She's always she's painted like that since the but beginning. She, isn't she, but she's Hispanic. She's a person of color. She's like half Hispanic. So, we're not claiming her. I, I know, but what's the whole big deal of like her? her doing her her makeup with this like glow and people are like coming for her saying that she's doing blackface but if you're a person of color wh why is that a thing you ever I, heard of that yeah no they come so for her. i've like there's been an entertainer and like i've kind of stopped people from like you know have trying to pick battles where they don't the battle doesn't need to be picked mm -hmm. yeah. so like you know i've seen raven from when she's first started until mm -hmm. now you know, and like blackface isn't something that people play around with, you right. know. So like genuinely, like if people thought she was doing blackface, she would have been canceled forever yeah. ago. RuPaul wouldn't have her as a makeup exactly. artist because RuPaul, she's RuPaul's yeah. makeup mm -hmm. artist. She's so a, she, what is it? She's an Emmy Award winning yeah. makeup artist. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and the, what she said in her interviews is like, you know, RuPaul's makeup's never the same twice. Mm -hmm. So that bitch has new makeup on every single time mm -hmm. and the th and it's like you know pick your battles wisely i think people there's there's times where it's like you know is this really something that's an yeah. issue or are we you have just, much bigger problems is, is this really an issue or are you just talking to hear yourself talk mm -hmm. like for think there's a hypersensitivity to all that i guess or especially with everything that's going on right now right. most likely absolutely yeah. i was i'm not gonna discount that but it's like you know there's I feel like in some things there's a lack of common sense with like is this really an issue or am I just bitching just to bitch you know what I mean and I think that comes back to a conversation we've had in a previous episode where we talk within our own community there's a lot of colorism mm -hmm. oh like, you know what I'm saying <laughs> like you know when we've talked about like like the the, the like indigenous people of Mexico mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who are darker skinned mm -hmm. you know they're looked at they're looked down as you know inferior the lesser, or yeah. the lesser mm -hmm. right and so when you look at when you look at somebody like Raven, who I guess I it, it's news to me that she's actually that she's Hispanic. I let me let me confirm that before I get canceled. But I think you're right though. I think there, there's some truth to that. Mm. But either way, I think that I, I think that there is it's it's a lot of that same thing. Like you wait, you can't do that because you're not. I feel like if you're a member of a community, yeah, like if you are black, if you're Latinx, if you're whatever, like you know. I've done numbers. I've done, I've performed Jenny Rivera songs before. And, wow. you know, like, do I know what I'm saying? I don't know Spanish like that. But I did I take the time to learn the words yeah. to that song? Absolutely. You know, no one read me for that because I'm performing a song, having a good time, and not doing it disrespectfully. You know what I Absolutely. mean? But, like, you know, I've had friends that have done I'm Here um from the color purple i've also done it mm -hmm. and i've had you know friends that are a lot darker complected than me been like you know maybe you shouldn't do that song maybe you should tip me and then i'll accept your opinion because my performance wasn't for you baby yeah. like that was for me and um you know there's just i there's there is a lot of colorism that goes on but it's like you know we need to what needs to stop happening is we need to stop paper bag testing things 
for everyone in the community. So yes. the, like the black community, we need to stop paper paperback testing people being like, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then the same thing with like the Latinx community. I know there's a lot that goes on. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. people assume. And these that are just songs. These are songs that people it, resonate literally, with. Literally. Literally. And drag is an art form. And like mm -hmm. whatever you resonate with is what drag is. Yeah. And people don't recognize that. People don't want to. So what about people like, taking drag too seriously? Girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you can take drag too seriously if it's your career. Okay. If, if drag right. is your career, absolutely take it as seriously as you want to. But if it's either you're going to take it seriously or you're going to accept the fact that you're doing this because it's a very fun hobby for you. Yeah. And it's a part of what you do and it's a part of your story. Because I always think drag is like taking the piss out of things. Like it, it's not like. It can be, you know. I mean, I understand like if you're in um, doing a pageant, the, the goal is to win, right? There's a, there's a goal. Uh-huh. But if you're performing at a bar and you're having fun, it doesn't have to be always that serious. No, yeah. no. Like, and you know, it should be a fun show. Like, of course there's going to be as a like entertainer in a show and you're booked and hired for that show. Like there's a certain point of professionalism you mm -hmm. have to have, but I mean, like, <laughs> like I'm not, I love his face. I love Seriously. Just, <laughs> like, you know, there's some shit that you people talk about. Oh, just do this for an hour. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. that that's, you know what? That I'm. This is gonna be my talent for Miss Gay Arizona. Just like. And if I win, I stage. will die. No, and like you know, because wait, what is that? Uh, I haven't thought about it preliminary yet. Okay. I I also don't think I'm ready. I want to be able to kind of build a package and mm -hmm. build a presentation to feel confident in right okay. now. Um, and right now I just really need to really think about like what. I want in that package before yeah. I can be like, yes, this is what I'm doing. Okay. Are um, you a different persona when you're when you're in drag? Not really. I feel like I'm like, a little like bit on louder. Drag race, they're like, oh, this, you know, they'll say their drag name and then she helped me, la 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 la, confidence, mm. la la la. I was wondering if that's your case. Not really. I feel like I'm a little bit louder because, like, genuinely, I feel like there are times I'm a little bit more introverted, and it's very hard to believe because, like, I would. There's times where loud. I would. I'm. AF, okay? <laughs> I would much rather be at home. Like, and that, that's, I would much that, that's be true. That's, yeah. And like, he knows me, and yeah. I'd much rather be at home. Yeah. Like, don't, I, I want to be at home in bed with my cats watching Netflix. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> but like, you know, when I'm out of drag, I'm like, let's take a shot. Are you <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's a whole yeah. different, but it's like, you would never assume that I'm introverted based on what I do for a living and based on my drag mm -hmm. ever. So, and like, you know, I think, I don't know. There's times that I think people just bitch there sometimes, you know? There's truth to that. Like, mm -hmm. and you know, like for Phoenix Pride, you know, there was like a lot of issues recently. People were like, oh, like Phoenix Pride doesn't pay their entertainers. And it's like, you know, people hear things and they don't know the full story. They just so repeat it because it's they, scandalous mm -hmm. and they want to be part of that it. That part. And it's like, you know, don't talk about things unless you know fully what yeah. the story is, you know? And it's like, you know, people will talk you know so much shit about multiple organizations and still willingly work with them so if you're going to talk poorly about phoenix pride and how you don't you think they're shady and how you think they don't pay their entertainers which is false then don't go wrong but then, even then, then but don't even, use their stage for your money but even then let's just let, let's just let's just which like you said it's not true but let's just say if that were to be true look at the exposure that something like phoenix pride is going to give you to the local community. that they weren't paying them that they said that people were saying that Phoenix Pride, the organization, mm -hmm. wasn't paying the drag queens that were performing at Pride. Right. Uh -huh. And that's not the way that works because they right. have a full ass process on mm -hmm. how to get compensation for your yeah. numbers. Like yeah. there's a full application process. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not like, oh, you're doing this for free. Quit it. Like yeah. you are talking based on someone else or a rumor without going to the source. Mm -hmm. So you just want to hear you want to hear what you want to hear, which is what a lot of newer entertainers that's their issue yeah. is that they don't hear what they don't want to hear and they only hear what they want to. Right. So when people come back and be like, Hey, maybe you should kind of check yourself here. Then they get ass chapped because it's like, well, girl, like, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. that's not what was said. That's what okay. you wanted to yeah. hear, you know? So I'm like, hmm, well, you know, do you feel like there's a sisterhood in the drag community? I feel like it's clicky. Here it can be very clicky. Um, for me, I talk to and associate Ooh. myself with whoever I know to be genuine, whoever isn't gonna cause me any harm, who isn't going to demean me, who isn't going to like be unsupportive of me, you know. What are you doing here? 
Well, bye. <laughs> um, Bitch, I've always been nice to you. I've always supported you. I'll give you that one dollar that one time. That one dollar. You also gave me a drink. You I also, did. You also See, fed, you, I brought you your ass a drink. Actually, fed me a chip. We are rooting for you. Mm-hmm. We were all oh, rooting, rooting for you. For you. <laughs> no, like, what was the question? God, you're so happy. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, no. Clicky, I, right? Clicky. So, imagine how conversations go when we're like hanging oh out. Right. And we both imagine you like, both are high. No, no. It can, it can, <laughs> like, in circles, the community <laughs> can be clicky, and that's, I guess, one flaw. But it's like, you know, you're Gays gonna, can be clicky too. You're going to yeah. flock to whoever you feel comfortable with. You we're know? told we're clicky. And that's different. Um, we are. We're not in wigs. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, I think Most I think clicky is confused with knowing who you are and knowing what friends knowing who are your there people for are. You. Right. And people who don't understand that are probably oh, not those clicking. people. Yeah. yeah. Well, in in drag too, it's like you know, there's people that are like, I need to know this person because they're gonna get me this gig, mm. and that's fine. What's that called? Uh, networking. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but it's like, you know, there's a difference between like genuine networking and, you know, hanging out with your drag queens. That's why you have like your drag family. Like mm-hmm. I have the Stevens drag family, but then I also have a chosen drag family. And like in that chosen drag family, it's like, you know, me, Sassy Diaz, Brooklyn Diaz, Christopher Vili, Evangelica Stratton, Jericho Galen. Like we all mm-hmm. are a family. Yeah. Like we all respect each other like that as a family. We all hold each other accountable. So if any one of us is on some bullshit, we're going to be like, Ayo. You remember that one time? Don't do that again. Because that <laughs> yeah. was fucked up. That's what we do now. Yeah. I think but all like, friends should be like that. Yeah and, yeah, and they should, you know. But there's like, you know, some drag queens will like, you know, pull some BS and, you know, just be like, oh, well, girl, just just apologize to them and just be done with it. Mm-hmm. For what? Like, hold that person accountable. Like, don't, apo- don't apologize on your behalf just because this person was an asshole. Like, yeah. genuinely, you know. Um. What? Have you ever dated a drag queen? Um, would you kai kai with them? I have kind of, sort of dated a drag queen. I've been on a date with another entertainer. Okay. Um, I just don't, at the time, I just was like, you know, I'm too busy with work. I can't do this. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm too wrapped up with what I'm doing. Yeah. And like, personally, right now where I'm at, like, I really want to focus on my time and me. Like, yeah. I am I'm quickly learning to find grace and solitude, which is a really big lesson for me. It's a beautiful thing. Eloquent. Because I like, you know, I was always so wrapped up in like, what are people gonna think? What are people gonna think? I don't care. Like you can tell me that I'm not shit because there's been older entertainers that say I'm not gonna book her because she's not shit. That's fine. You don't enjoy my drag. I don't enjoy you as a person. You do too Dang. much coke. So, oh. 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 so oh. <laughs> tell me who that is after the show. After the show. But it's like, you know what I mean? I was like, don't, I don't want the, like the Dyson vacuum nose telling me that I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm the shade is coming out. Like, oh my God. I'm, you I'm, heard it here first. Like I'm good. Like I, I'm okay. Like, please, I'm fine. You know, but mm-hmm. it's like, I, I wouldn't mind dating another drag queen. Like I, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. I don't, you know what I mean? Like as long as you're a good person, yeah. you have good intent, you have goal set in life. You are happy with what you do for work. That's fine. If, if you're living your genuine truth, you're a happy person. I'm with it. Like, whatever. Like, like if sex is an issue for you, the sex can be figured out. Like, intimacy is a little bit more important than sex to me. Because, you know, if I just... She's a drag queen with a heart. If I'm just looking for a quick <laughs> nut, I can do it myself. Uh, me and Twitter. Oh, Twitter's <laughs> the new... Seriously. Uh, me, <laughs> listen, <laughs> flick my bean is what that is. Just, do you have a bean? I don't have a bean. <laughs> I was going to say, what? Pinto? Black? Black bean? Wow. <laughs> Wow! I fucking what am. shape is it? <laughs> Can we see? <laughs> it? Can we see after? Memo's trying to see this. Well, yeah. What? Nothing. Nothing. I can't. Oh my god! Are you both blushing? blushing. <laughs> oh my god! I can't. Can you both do it in drag? No. You said that you is the one thing it. I refuse not? to do <laughs> is have sex and drag. What about a wig? Why? But you have said. Oh, if I oh, if I'm, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I have said, and if you had a paid attention to what I had said, I said I'm taking my wig off and I'm putting it on you. So what if he pays you? How much? There's a price. <laughs> so you will do it for a price. Five hundred dollars. Never mind. Okay then. <laughs> I just never mind. Have you ever worked behind Carambas? I have receipts. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Post them on the screen right now. <laughs> 
If you want to post my Venmo, my cash app, oh, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna. We can do that. <laughs> You're not gonna get Absolutely. anybody. Just four people watching. No, who's your friend? Hopefully. Get a lot of requests from this show. <laughs> oh my god! I know. Okay. What friend? Uh, who's the bottle one that I asked about uh, getting a demonstration about the condoms? Oh, on the show. Mm-hmm. Remember? Your friend, the one that stood up, Ivan. Uh, Ivan. Oh Ivan. yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Sorry. He can go ahead and just throw me a tip. He's married. Work. That's fine. Okay, he's he's straight. She even said, "Go ahead." She said, I'm tired. They're awesome, though. She was tired. <laughs> she like, was tired. She said, had the baby. She said, go ahead. I'm tired. All right. Well, you know, I've known him for 24 years. Ivan. Yeah, he was fun. Actually, you He's would awesome. be probably really pissed if Ivan did something with him and not with you first. Yeah. Yeah. That would. That was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, my God. Was I was supposed to reveal that? No. Oh my god. Oops. You stupid bitch. Oops. What, what good? We've never revealed something on accident on the show before, right? I and we're right. even. And, and we're, we're even, even bitch. bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh my god. Okay, we're even. We're even. We're, that's. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm sitting in the middle. <laughs> If you're gonna record over a show, do this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there was so much I said that I felt was good. No, actually, like this was this has been this, a, is, a this good, is a good eye show. opening show. Good. It's been fun because like I think I for me just as a, as a spectator, somebody who enjoys mm-hmm. watching drag, mm-hmm. I've learned a lot. Like you know, and and I'm sure people can you know can 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 walk away or you know hit the stop button. Mm-hmm. Um, tip your queens. To tip your queens. Mm-hmm. With, Don't with, throw money at them. And if you um, do, don't read them. Make sure it's hundred dollar bills, not just one. Seriously. I mean, if it was a hundred dollars and they threw it at you, you'd probably pick it up. Oh, instantly. Uh, yeah. She <laughs> would die for it. If she don't she pick up. Dive. She don't pick up once. I will, She might pick up a ten. I would lose my wig for that hundred. <laughs> There's been when I went to San Francisco and Columbus, it was such a different thing. Every city has a different vibe. Well, huh? Columbus and San Francisco were almost the same with how I was treated as an entertainer. Uh-huh. Like literally in Columbus. The security guard. Oh, let me take it back. Oh. I'm sorry. What? When I went to San Francisco, same story. Oh, here, let me get you to the dressing room. Let me take it back. Do you want water? When you went to Carambas, you're by the trash cans in the back. <laughs> well, no, like, I get very... Oh, when I you ca- did our show, I took your bag upstairs. Yeah, we yeah, took your see? bag. Well, I know. Not everyone treated the same. <laughs> but, like, at Kanama, I treated very well. Like, the staff there is really, really good. Uh, C7. Like, all the bars I've worked at have been very good here. It's just a different vibe and a different respect of drag queens yeah. so in columbus they were like oh just because you were a drag queen but the minute they heard i was from out of town they lost their shit because they thought i was somebody i was like baby it's been five months i am nobody <laughs> so like you're lucky you're gonna get a twirl or a kick but in san francisco it was the same story like they assumed like you know i was i'm like Oh, and you know, being a part because I'm a part of the Imperial Court of Arizona, so I'm a uh-huh. member. Like being a part of that has really helped network a lot because when I travel, like it's an international org, it's a national organization. So that way, you know, mm-hmm. hey, like I'm going to San Francisco. They are very big on the Imperial Court over there, and like oh, okay. you know, so like you're able to make those connections. And yeah. drag is like really good with getting to make those connections too. So, well, thank you so much for being on the show absolutely one. that was fun. where can we find you on socials and when's your next show um so um i am under zara stevens on facebook i am under zara zara dot j dot stevens on, on instagram um and then my next show i will actually be hosting a um turnabout pageant for the phoenix storm rugby team Right. On oh, Sunday at 4 p.m., um, it will be at Bunkhouse. Um, they are going to be raising money for um, their trip to Vegas to the Southwest Rugby Tournament. They will yeah. also be raising money for the Bingham Cup um, oh, that they're going to go to next year. So um, it's going to be really good. We're going to try to raise a lot of money. And then after that, I believe I'm booked um, with Miss Davina Ross, who is another community icon at um, Plasma. And it's me, and I don't know who else, but it's going to be a good time. So, All right. So if you want to awesome. see this bitch in a sealy possipedic, oh listen, come and see, come and see her. Foam <laughs> Girl, she's <laughs> IKEA. No, it's easy to put together. Um, how hurtful! How hurtful! What? Well, mine was IKEA. You literally were. No, uh, yours was Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's pads. Bitch. I was literally wow. Michael's pads. <laughs> like my pads like were literally the from from Michael's. No, the from, craft literally store. from Walmart. Oh, oh she's a Walmart queen. What? Well, it was my first time. Second time. Well, oh, you were kind of the public. first time. Huh? Your you first time, time actually first time. wearing things professionally. Like, you right. actually wore body. Like, you had nails on, you wore body, you had your makeup done. I was real makeup. Hair. 
Like I was, I was wearing, well, You know what she was wearing though For nails All toes <laughs> No they weren't wow. You're so full of shit uh, Tell me they weren't toes. No, they weren't toes. Okay. But before we before we wrap up, I actually got a couple of um, very ignorant questions, but okay. pretty much in order to like for people who are barely getting into this world or like getting you know not the ignorant questions, <laughs> not the ignorance. Yeah, just the uh, so number one mm-hmm. is that can women do drag? Absolutely. Um, there's um, drag is drag, so you don't have to be. Um, so in drag, there's male impersonation, female impersonation, there's bio queens, there's bio kings. Um, so like you can literally be anything you want to and be in drag. It's just very much based on what you want to embody. So me, I am a female impersonator. Um, my friend Sassy Diaz, she is a femme performer, which is what we call our biological um assign the female at birth queens that mm-hmm. I perform as women okay. um brooklyn diaz is also a femme performer um and they're both national title holders as well so like there's a whole bunch of different opportunities especially in the pageantry system for that um type of entertainer and you even have straight men who do drag oh yeah, yeah. you don't have to be that was going to be my next mm-hmm. question oh, okay. yeah can well, a straight I man UK, there was a stri- uh, bi man that was doing yeah. Drag and now, yeah. right now on this seasons of UK season three, there was a biological woman. Mm. Her name was Victoria Scone. Victoria Victoria Scone. And yeah, she, yeah, she performs drag. Yeah, so like you don't have to identify like outside of heterosexual mm-hmm. for you to perform as a drag right. uh, entertainer. Um, like think of drag as theater. You know, mm-hmm. there are, are plenty of um men that have played female roles and have actually dressed up as. Which you know Shakespeare. Well, that's, what, I mean, that's what I was. For example, like, that's kind of like, um, one of the f- like back then, like they didn't recorder. like women weren't allowed to be on stage. That's not mm-hmm. that's not anything that was done. So all of the female parts that were in Shakespeare plays. So Juliet was played mm-hmm. by a man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't really know the history. It's one of the oldest of forms of drag that's known of. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, uh, well, those were my two that I had. Oh, okay. um, and I would like to encourage anyone else who's listening to this, who may have friends who are not too familiar, send us questions. Of Absolutely. Not only drag, but all form of, you know, of the homosexual sphere. Absolutely. I think that that's, that's true. There's so much I did the whole thing. Learn. I'm not even on camera anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I did all the movements. No, I think there's so much to learn. There's so many things that there's so many different avenues that can be visited or can mm-hmm. be talked mm-hmm. about. I mean, when we talk about certain issues or when we talk about what we the what we talk about, it's it's a lot of times it's very experience. It's very what we've been through, what we've known. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's still so it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that you can learn. That, that would be. <laughs> so sorry about the interruption, guys. You know, little booty call. Yeah, right. I don't have those. I'm a Christian. A booty or a call? A bitch. Damn. <laughs> I'm working on the booty. That is a sensitive <laughs> subject. You stupid bitch. Why is this so sensitive? Like with your long back having ass. Honey. 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 Really? We're on the same page, sweetie. <laughs> I have a little more than you, Flat bitch. as fuck. No, you don't. Yes, I do, bitch. Girl, you wide, but you don't got the bubble. Oh, talk about wide load over here. Sweetie, you're really? wider than me. Really? 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 Anyways, before... I hate it here. <laughs> Me too, girl. Same, same. So I just no, want my show pay. Can I go? <laughs> there oh, no you're not getting pay. paid, bitch. Sorry. You're gonna get. You're gonna get a happy meal. Okay, I'm hungry. So let's that go. sounds like good. Bro. Some that wings. Really good. No, but since we're talking about that, like you know, we uh, we work with. We want to, you know, basically talk about Spectrum Medical and what they do for the community. It's important to know, you know, kind of what we're about, and this, this actually ties into your drag to what you do, not only as, as a professional but mm-hmm. also in drag. You know, it's about using your voice and whether it be we have eight listeners, nine because, you know, eight because number nine is here. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to smack you there. But um, <laughs> later. <laughs> um, and <laughs> it's about it's about ending. It's about using your voice, whether we know. Like, like I, I think that we know what we've heard over the last few weeks of people who have kind of reassured us and, and, and let us know that they listen to us and they can identify with who we are and what we talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, it's important that we use that reach to talk about our community, the issues that our community faces, such as the HIV and AIDS and the steps that we can take to prove 
to improve on already the grand strides that we have already been taking within our community, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like with Spectrum Medical, like, you know, they do, you know, there's condoms, free condoms provided, they mm -hmm. do free testing. You do that as well with the Southwest I Center do. for I HIV do. AIDS. And we work really well with like Spectrum. Mm -hmm. like, awesome. like we all like partner to do these like really big events and awesome. stuff like that. So like, you know, us at the Southwest Center, we do the same thing as Spectrum does. Spectrum is like works really well with Ripple right. and stuff, but like Spectrum is also really good at like, you know, getting people quick to care. I'm not saying we're not, but I mean, like they're also really good. They work um, with Ripple in the community. So mm -hmm. a lot of their testers and stuff work at Spectrum. So uh, whenever you go get tested in the community with like these other organizations, you'll yeah. see the same provider. So mm -hmm. it really helps keep your consistency with care. Absolutely. And like um, this is also really good at like, you know, ending the stigma because there's still a lot of ignorance when it comes to HIV and how it's transmissed. Like, if you know somebody who is living with HIV and they're undetectable, support them like Absolutely. make make sure that they know that they're not like they're not less than like they're Absolutely. they're deserving of the equal amount of love that everybody else everybody does else but then also know that you know prep is also not just for the queer community it's also for the straight community because hiv doesn't affect mm -hmm. just our just community. community it affects everyone so like if hiv had racist and, tr and transphobic tendencies then i guess we would tell but you know that's not how it works Absolutely. so just trying to maintain and you know keeping a check on yourself and making sure you're keeping yourself safe and making sure that um you're participating in safer behaviors when you're having sex so and if Absolutely. you have a question always reach out to your doctor like getting a primary care physician that's really sex positive and really opening open to answering these types of questions is yeah. going to be really really important too okay. so awesome great info great and you can get that info. all Awesome. Well, thank you for that. That's a lot of information. I know mm -hmm. it's a lot to take. You can actually, there's plenty of resources here within town from Spectrum, Southwest Center for HIV and AIDS, Ripple. There's a lot of different places you can definitely reach out to to find those resources, to find more information. If you have any more questions, they're always open to answer. So definitely reach out if you have that. All right. Well, thank you so much thank again you so much for, for coming, coming and letting us peek into the world of. Uh, I want a happy meal. What was your name again? Ruby, we've Ruby been over Reynolds. this. Rest. No, 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 I was calling you Ruby. No, you're Ruby. Why? Zara Stevens, everybody. Zara Stevens, everybody. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> yeah. I've known Ruby forever, and she has always been hilarious. Yeah. Like, every time. Like, she is. Time. She is. <laughs> every time. I mean, we always watched her in Caravas. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. She's awesome. All right, all right guys. on talking. <laughs> I know, right? As we go into another fucking topic. But I think that's all we have for today, right? Yeah. Is that all we got? Yeah. We've talked a lot. Yes. Some more than others. Yes. <laughs> Can we end this? <laughs> Jesus right. Christ. Thank you so you asked me these questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on yet another episode of episode two. And a half. And a half. So episode 2.5. <laughs> um, take two. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you really, you have. Ah. Hopefully you Bye. can catch us next time. Bye. Bye. Find us on our socials. Thank you. Hey Betch the Pod on Instagram. Hey Betch the Podcast on Facebook. Danny is Dang AZ86 on Instagram. I am Insta Memo Mem. Insta underscore Memo Mem. And you are Zara dot J dot Stevens on Instagram. Zara, and Zara Stevens, Stevens on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Have a good you. night. Bye. Bye. Hey Bitch is part of the Fuerte Arts Network. The thoughts and opinions on this show are our own and do not necessarily reflect those of the Fuerte Arts Movement.